Adults weren't the only part of the population enjoying the unprecedented prosperity of the 1950s in America. Suddenly, children also had money, as well as all sorts of new ways of spending it. And one thing kids all over the country were tuning into was music. They listened to it on the radio, from their 45 RPM records, and on the new invention, television. Before the 50s, most music was generally divided along racial lines. For white teenagers, their music tended to be a blend of gospel and country. Black teens' musical preferences tended to be rooted in blues. But these lines of distinction were forever blurred in 1951 as a new form of music was created just for teenagers. Cleveland disc jockey Alan Freed called the new music rock and roll. And suddenly, parents had something else to worry about. This new style of music often featured electric guitar solos, and the lyrics of the songs generally centered on subjects teens identified with, such as school, dating, and drive-in movies. Rock and roll also played to teenagers' rebellious nature. The reason kids like rock and roll is their parents don't. Mitch Miller. Rock music took a major step into the mainstream when Elvis Presley became a hit on the radio airwaves. After releasing his first hit, Heartbreak Hotel in 1956, Presley was at the top of the music industry charts for the next decade and became a teen icon. But it wasn't just his music that made Presley a hit. His trademark gyrating pelvis style of dancing also wooed the girls, although their parents were less than thrilled. Because Presley was such an undeniable hit, he was asked to perform on one of the most popular variety television programs of the time, The Ed Sullivan Show. But the show's producers decided to only show Presley from the waist up to keep from broadcasting what they considered suggestive dancing. Parents of teenagers found other reasons to be wary of the influence rock and roll had over their children. Many believed the word rock was a substitute word for the act of sex. So when Bill Haley's song Rock Around the Clock was produced, it was banned in England and parts of the U.S. Along with this new music came new dance steps, and to learn the latest dances, teens tuned their televisions each week to American Bandstand. The bop, the hand jive, and the stroll replaced jitterbugging and the Charleston. American Bandstand made a pop icon of its host, Dick Clark, and it made music something that everyone could participate in, rather than simply listen to. 